is lit. Oh my God. I saw y'all out here dancing. Oh, you think I didn't see you? Oh, I saw you. You could feel that energy all the way in the back. I was like, let me hear up and get out there so I can get my two step on. Y'all look like y'all was having so much fun. Did you have a good time getting out here on the good foot? Yeah. You seem like it. Okay, okay, because I saw a lot of smiling, happy faces. So that's my mug of the day. You see the mug? Okay, it's the smiley face. See, when I see stuff like this, when I see a smiley face of butterflies, now hummingbirds, to me that is a sign of, of good energy, something good is gonna happen, positive. You see what I'm saying? So. That is what the smiley face represents today. Yes, I'm about to take my sip. Y'all hold the line. <laughs> ah, that's so good. You ain't want none, did you? <laughs> okay, let's get into it. Everything is not for everybody, especially when it comes to food. One person's yum could be somebody else's yuck. So we want to know, What's that dish you don't mind tearing up or what's that plate that you just got to push away? We're calling this meal or no meal. <laughs> yes. Okay, maybe you like these or maybe you're just pregnant or something like that. <laughs> okay, How do I, see, this is my thing. So like, I love pickles, right? But anybody love pickles? But wait. But my sister hate pickles, right? And then she loves cucumbers, but I hate cucumbers, right? So I'm curious to know, so I wanna know how y'all feel about pickles. Anybody? You on my team or you on Juju's team? Which one is it? Hello. How are you? What's your name? My name is Austin. Hi, Austin. How are you? I am wonderful. Awesome, awesome. Pickles. Not a big fan. Not a big fan at all. Not a big fan. I don't like the taste. What? I don't like the, the acidity or whatever it is of it. It's a no meal. No meal. Okay, it's a no meal for it's you. It's a no meal. Man, okay, not even a hot pickle or hot, cold, a sweet lukewarm, pickle or... whatever. Nah. Sour pickle. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody else? I'm a chef, okay? You're a chef? I am. Come on, chef. Hey. Well, tell everybody what's your name and where you from. My name is Jennifer. I'm right here from sunny California, Rancho Cucamonga. Okay, Jennifer. <laughs> See, you're a chef and your name is Jennifer. My name is Jennifer. I'm, I'm just not thinking, a good right? cook at all. Right, right. <laughs> no, I have a totally different opinion. Number one, pickles are actually very versatile. So they can be bitter or they can be sweet. They can be used, the juice can be used to marinate certain meats. It actually breaks down and tenderizes certain meats, like steaks, if you, you put it in there. Us. And also, it's a snack that goes great on a burger. And then also, you could just knock on them by themselves. That it looks, that's extremely versatile to me. So to me, that makes it a go. <laughs> I'm with you, Jennifer. Thank you for that. Okay, I got another one for y'all. You're about to bite into this juicy hamburger, but it is smothered in onions. Are you still biting it? Yeah. Hold the line. I can't stand no onions. Okay, ma'am, can you please stand up, Miss Onion Lover, and tell me how you feel about it? <laughs> What's oh your name? God. So, I am, oh, I'm Treasure. Treasure. I'm from Los Angeles. Okay. Born and raised. I have three beautiful daughters, but I would tell you my last daughter is an onion baby. She hates onions because all I ate was onions. Mm -hmm. I eat onions by themselves. I wake up in the middle of the night, I will grill a whole onion, I will what? eat it. I eat onions on french fries, hamburgers, tacos, anything you can put an onion on or you can't put an onion on, I'm the onion girl. Love onions, <laughs> got good breath. <laughs> And they're healthy for you. Listen, you know you don't like some even when you're pregnant and you still don't like it. When I was pregnant with my son, I still hated onions and I still do this, to this day. So I'm in awe of you that you, you, you what? I do, but my youngest daughter hates onions. She can smell an onion a mile away. Listen, if you're sitting at the table and you're trying to eat onions next to me, I'd be like, can, can y'all please move to another table? Because it's, <laughs> that's how bad I hate onions. But I can make it look like a candy apple. Like, I can make you love okay. onions. Okay. <laughs> no, it, and that is not a candy apple. Now, now, you'd go too far. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for that. Thank you. 
you. Unfortunately, we won't be having lunch together. Okay. <laughs> okay, we're dipping some hot wings in ranch, but are you dipping them in blue cheese as well? Are you blue cheese people or ranch people? Let me see. Ranch hot! No ranch. Blue cheese. I knew this one was gonna be serious. No ranch. Definitely blue cheese. Blue cheese. Don't, I'm like you with the onions, don't bring the ranch anywhere near me. Okay, yes. I don't wanna smell it, I don't wanna see it, they're not the it's same. It's like that? Blue cheese, especially blue cheese prepared correctly, the absolute best <laughs> with fried chicken wings, zucchini strip. Don't yeah. bring me no ranch, ever. Don't bring, blue cheese all day. Yeah, blue cheese all day. All day, I'm with you. See, ooh, ooh, that's a tough one. Hello, ma'am. What's your name and where are you from? My name is Noelle and I'm from Los Angeles. Nice. Thank you, thank you. Um, no to blue cheese. It wants to be ranch so bad. <laughs> you know, um, so it's triggering. But ranch, it goes on pizza, it goes on wings. Um, blue cheese is just like cottage cheese as well. It's just very triggering and it's never straightforward, so. <laughs> Ranch. Ranch and ranch. Okay, I gotta tell y'all how I feel. See, I like them both. Me too, yeah. I like them both. But I love some old nasty blue cheese, though, okay? It gotta be just a mmm. But um, it, to me, it's a matter of what you put it on. So, like, a celery stick, I'd rather ranch yeah. with the celery stick. But if I'm going for some good old, like, blue cheese, I just won't... I, I, I would use that for my hot wing. Yeah, but my, my son loves to put ranch on pizza. I still don't understand that. Y'all like that? Really? Okay, this is getting more and more interesting. Okay, this is just, th this one I really got an issue with because this is supposed to be healthy. Okay, so they are in boiled Brussels sprouts. Um, so I, uh, you grew up eating like caramelized? With caramelized with bacon and... Why are we doing this to the Brussels sprout? I guess that's what I'm saying. <laughs> It's supposed to be a healthy choice, and let me explain myself. It's like, okay, if we're gonna eat Brussels sprouts, we're, I at least think we're trying to eat healthy, right? So why are we caramelizing the Brussels sprout? <laughs> Anyone can help me here. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm Xavier. Hi. From San Diego, California. <laughs> okay. So if you can't look past the smell of Brussels sprouts, grow up, just grow up. <laughs> Because it's one of the most succulent, savory, sweet things that you could even eat. It's so good. It, I don't know. It just takes me back. That's all I got to say. Okay. I like you. Go ahead. <laughs> That's a good one. Well, thank y'all for sharing with me. We got a great show. We'll be right back. For the past 24 years, millions of people, including myself, has tuned in to watch our first guest lay down the law. Give it up for the Honorable Judge Mathis. Side town in the house. Anybody else get nervous when Judge Mathis come around? <laughs> I get nervous. Okay. Do you remember when we first met? Yes, I do. You it do? was the beginning of your career. Oh, my God. Uh, at Operation Push in Detroit with Reverend Jesse Jackson. Oh. We were honoring you. I'm on the board of directors. So we were honoring you for your achievements as a homegirl oh. in Chicago. Oh. So. Oh, my goodness. OK, so what did you do for the holidays? You, you go on vacation a lot? Yeah. Took my family. Uh, every year, we go somewhere on an international trip. This year, it became Mexico. But in mm. the past, <laughs> which is very international, but international nonetheless. Nice. Typically, <laughs> I take them somewhere every year. That's what I'll say, an international trip. And this, uh, the first one was to Egypt. And then we went to South Africa. And as the years went on, oh, the man. family got bigger. Well, it's bigger now. laws <laughs> and grandchildren. And so, so we went from Egypt now to Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> so what's next year going to be? And for six, it's a lot less. <laughs> it's a lot easier than for 12. <laughs> I can't imagine. So, okay, with all 12 of everybody, do you call, you call the shots, right? Not one bit. No? Absolutely not. At home, nowhere involving my <laughs> wife and children and extended relatives do I call any shots. No, no. he got it serious. He said, no, I'm I won't call a shot there. absolutely uh, banned from any <laughs> input. <laughs> from all input, huh? Dad, you talk too much, you know too much, we got this. You were doing all that when we were children, now we're adults. Now we're calling the shots. Now they're calling the shots. You had to go for it. That's right, and then you have 
two granddaughters. Mm -hmm. And one of them is acting and singing. Yes. One is acting and singing. Uh -huh. And she says she wants to be like the beautiful bird, Egat. I said, no, you want to be the Egat. Oh. <laughs> like Jennifer Hudson. <laughs> How old is she? She is six years old. Six years old? Yeah, starring in her school and uh, plays, yes. Yeah, nice. She's the star of all of the uh, plays she's been in. Okay, now I heard you've been around here singing. You officiated a wedding, and then you sang at it. I'm from Motown, what you expect? Oh, you know you I'm from Motown. Yeah, <laughs> what, what, what did you sing and what gave you the idea to sing? Let me see, uh, that's for the wedding, because I sing a lot now. Yeah. Don't get me started. Oh, but... I do want to get you started. <laughs> we want it, but we ain't gonna, you know. So, um, <laughs> it was extemporaneous. I mean, uh, this is my makeup artist daughter, Debbie Davis, her daughter's getting married, and so I'm there to officiate, and I'm at the reception, and something just comes over me. It came over you. It you know what? I think we got a clip. I need to see it come over you. What a clip at. Okay. Okay. Listen at you. You were singing Luther too. Only one or two people could do Luther, and I'm one of them. You hear that? <laughs> You better tell it. No. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to talk about Miss Aretha Franklin, mm. who was very special to both of us. Yes. 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 She was amazing. And she loved you dearly. And I loved her dearly. Mm -hmm. And and we, you took the stage at a you know at, you spoke at her funeral. Yes. As well. Yes. She and I were very close, uh, as were you with mm -hmm. her. Um, going back to when I began working for Mayor Young in Detroit, 1989, and. Aretha was our queen, and so the yes. mayor made sure she was always straight. And so I was one of the people that he assigned to make sure that she got everything she needed while in wow. Detroit. So you spent a lot of time with her. Yeah, and then later when I came to television, she was proud of, of me uh, and then kind of pulled me in closer to try and give me some direction yes. and orders. And <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, she gonna get some orders now. That's right. Oh, I miss those orders. Yeah. Hearing uh, from, did she ever cook for you? Oh, my goodness. Yeah. But I got a bigger one for What's you. What's that? Look at her. We, we were in Washington, D.C. I think it was for one of her big honors, Kennedy Honors mm -hmm. or something. We she stand at the Four Seasons Hotel there in Georgetown, beautiful, and they have this great brunch every Sunday morning. And so she calls us, Greg, we're going down to brunch. Okay, Reef. I'm going down in the lobby. You know, she had her six security. She needed it. Six security guys. Everybody wants a piece of Aretha. And so we're waiting, and they say, okay, judges, we're heading on out. I said, what are you talking about? The brunch is right here. She said, no, we're not going to that brunch. I said, where are we going? They said, down to the Johnny Rockets. <laughs> Up <laughs> the street to that. I said, hold on, Reed. You told me we were going to brunch. And this is the best brunch in town. I didn't tell you it was going to be here. <laughs> oh, my God. So that's one of uh, my famous stories regarding uh, her preparing dinner <laughs> or otherwise having dinner with her. Well, she made sure you was fed. Uh, I'm sure she did, right? <laughs> <laughs> that's right. And she was a down. That's the down to earth yes. home girl. That's one of the things I like to point out with that. Yes. Uh, is that she was very down to earth. I mean, how many superstar queen uh, voted as the number one singer of all time? Of all time. Um, yes. Um, yes. Yes. And by the way, you're the only one that God. could ever have done that. Thank so you're you so right much. there. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But Thank yes, you. only one. Thank you. Thank you. Only one. Couldn't imagine anyone being able to do that. Thank you so much. I have to say to you, congratulations on your walk of fame. Mm -hmm. Your star. Thank you. Thank that you. is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. How often do you visit it? Well, I went uh, right before the holidays. You I did? went down to look at it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You kidding? Yeah. There you go. Oh my God. I gotta go visit it. Yeah.
Now, the funny story behind that is I wasn't too excited mm -hmm. when I was told I was going to receive it. It was a great honor, yeah. I knew, and I'm grateful. But, you know, I didn't know how big of a deal it was till they told me, well, Charlie Chapman's been here for 100 years. I said, so, oh, I'll get 100 years? I said, what about if an earthquake occurs? They said, we'll just rebuild it. We'll build I said, oh, it. this is a big deal, then. <laughs> I, I, now you know how big of a deal it is. So ever since then, I go down every two <laughs> weeks. I love that. <laughs> oh, my God. Will you, will you stick around for a little bit more? Oh, yeah. All right. What would you let me tell you something. My nephew is very popular, especially with men like us, okay? Um, say for instance, I'm gonna tell you something about him. He went to Atlanta, and when he got to Atlanta, he gets off the airplane, all these girls start running up to the airplane, flocking around him. They thought he was Puffy Collins. So instead of him saying he not Puffy Collins, he walking around flexing, you know, doing all this like he Puffy Collins. Now look at do he look like Puff Daddy? You? <laughs> I mean, he flexing. He didn't tell him that. I'm not saying a word. <laughs> <laughs> and we're back with Judge Mathis. Okay, so you were in jail before you became a judge? Yeah. Um. 15 years before being elected, I was a street kid, uh -huh. 17 years old, in jail, being tried as an adult. Judge gave me a second chance after nine months behind bars. Came out 15 years later after having gone to undergrad, gone to law school. They held my law license up, even though it was expunged. After I got my law license at the state Supreme Court, because they had denied me, Mm -hmm. um, I then began working for the city council, then the mayor, then Reverend Jackson, and uh, then elected judge, and now 23 years later on television. Man! 23 years! Yeah. Three, three seasons, 24 seasons? Yep. That That's is right. amazing. 20, but you know, I like to make note of the fact that I had to go to the Supreme Court to get my law license, and I didn't give up even after I had gone to undergrad law school, owed 250,000 in student loans, I could have turned away like a lot of brothers do. But I didn't, I fought until I got what I had prepared myself for. You'll be a great example to all of them. That's what I'm telling you. That is a, did you ever think that you would last 23, four seasons? Well, I had no intention to, quite frankly. No intention, frankly. Uh. I thought, uh, first of all, they told me it was only a 20% chance we'd uh, succeed. So I said, okay, I think I'll beat that. But I had to give up my judgeship. I was a sitting judge. I had to a give that job judge. up. Uh -huh. Job up. And so I said, okay, well, I'll leave and get this little exposure, even if it's for one year. Then I'll come back and run for mayor of Detroit, which had been one of my aspirations as a political activist and uh, operative. And so... Here we are. I've been trying to run for mayor of Detroit yeah. ever since then. <laughs> <laughs> but they keep putting that contract in my wife and kids' face. <laughs> uh, wow. Th this, is, this is inspiring just to hear everything you're saying. So thank you for sharing all of this with us. Okay, so here, I didn't sometimes have problems when you switch up your, your look. Can't. So you can't switch up your look? No, I'm lucky to be able to change my glasses. Really? Yes, yes, So, yes. So if you switched up your glasses, what would happen? I got to do it slow and easy. <laughs> I got to give an explanation, all type of stuff, because in the court genre, a lot of the viewers are older. Uh -huh. And many of us should know, if you don't, that older folks generation don't like a lot of change. They like that's good, that's stability. A good note. Okay. And so... When I came to air, in my <laughs> third year, I wanted to change my hairstyle. No, you can't change it, because the audience, they'll chat. what do you mean, about your hair? I just didn't believe it. I was kind of at the executives. I was like, they don't know what they're talking about. So then I'm talking to the barber. I say, my, the executives are saying I can't change my hair because people will stop watching or some folks will turn away. I don't believe that. He said, well, judge. He said, uh, my grandmother had a televangelist. She would send money to every week, religiously. She said, one day, oh, I said, Grandma, you start seeing such and such? She said, no, I don't watch him no more. <laughs> she said, why, Grandma? She didn't know why. She said, I don't know. It's just something about it. <laughs> something different. <laughs> Couldn't even define why. Oh, my God. And then when he said he saw him, he said, Grandma, can you tell his hair had changed? That's what That's it is. That's what it was. She didn't even know. <laughs> I'm done. Like I'm done. <laughs> so... 
I got my hair different today, uh -huh. but that hair that you see on television, it's gonna same. be the same thing 30 years from now. Y'all hear that? On television. That means we got 30 more seasons on top of that. <laughs> well, with Judge Mathis, we'll be right back. And we're back with Judge Mathis. You're so full of wisdom. Tell me, what's the biggest lesson that you've learned? The biggest lesson I've learned is that you can take risk in life, but be prepared um, in case that risk goes south. Mm. Um, on the other hand, preparation, if that risk goes south, then you're prepared for other opportunities. So the best lesson I've learned is to be prepared for multiple opportunities so that when that multiple opportunity comes about, you're ready to handle it. I love it. Y'all caught that? So we have people in the audience that's gonna pre present some real life scenarios and we wanna know what you're gonna rule to that. All right. Okay, you gonna help us out? Not my All right. Time. All right. <laughs> Let's see. Chrissy, where you at? Right here. What you got for us? Hi, Judge Mathis. Hi, Jennifer. Hi. Okay, so um, I've been married for 33 years. What yeah, you, hey. What did you do? That's an accomplishment. Crazy. Who did you More kill? my doctorate. <laughs> Um, <laughs> but my husband and I continuously argue today about his obnoxious, annoying, very loud snoring every single night. <laughs> okay, when that starts, I gently nudge him to wake up. Now, if you talk to him, he's like, oh, she kicks me, she punches me, she hits me. No, I gently nudge, gently nudge him to stop so that I can sleep. Now, he feels that I should not do that. He feels that he should just go ahead and continue on with that loud, obnoxious, annoying snoring. Put him out. Uh-oh. <laughs> go and, and do it correctly. Go to court. OK. Go to court? Yes. There's a theory in court whereby if someone is uh, uh, harming the quiet enjoyment, of your tenancy, That's so they disturb you the can peace. evict them. He's disturbing oh. the quiet enjoyment of the co-tenancy that you all have. Serve him his paper. <laughs> Tell him he can go up to the apartment upstairs. I was like, we can't put he him can in the... move to the house next door. Oh. We we'll, uh, see each other during the day and to the late evening. Then you going back up to your condo or next door to your house, and you can snow all you want. Okay, all right. That's Thank what you. you do. That's my decision. Well, okay, uh, <laughs> Yolanda. Yes. All Hello, right. Judge Mathis. Hello. Hello, Jennifer. How are you? Great. <laughs> Here's my predicament. For years, we have four kids, and for years, they keep. The light's on. Every room they go into, you can track them because you know where they've been. Even as young adults, they still do the same thing. And I'm telling them, look, I was raised, my mom said, keep that man's hand out of my pocket because the more you leave lights on and fans on and stuff, the pg e bill goes up. So I tried everything. I talked to him. I've yelled at him. I've threatened him. I said, who left this light on? You know the answer I get? What's that? I don't know and not me. And I said, those two people don't live here. <laughs> so, <I'm> like, <laughs> That's right. What, what suggestion do you have, especially now that they're young adults, you know, because until they got to pay the bill, they don't care. They don't care. Exactly. I'm with her. Well, I had to pay, that was the only bill I paid as a child was put something on the light bill. I think back then it was $20 a month. <laughs> so I paid that $20. <laughs> However, uh, I would tell them that they have to split the bill amongst themselves. Okay. And tell them, if you all don't pay the bill, you're going to be sitting here in the dark, <laughs> in the cold with no gas. You're going to have to eat slop and drink muddy water because I'm not <laughs> cooking either. That's what you do. That's I'm how you get him on that. I'm going to hit it. <laughs> a couple right. of times. <laughs> Children, turn them lights off or y'all going to be paying some bills. You hear that? Right. Thank you, Judge Mathis, for being here. Will you come back again? Uh, and if nothing else, I'll see you in Chicago, right? Yes, yes, All right. Yeah. Judge Mathis airs weekdays. Check your local listing or visit JudgeMathisTV.com. We'll be right back. 
You're all in for a treat today. Earlier this season, I met the cutest kid dancer ever. Well, she's back again to make our day just a little bit brighter. Please welcome the one and only Indy Bug. Oh my God. Hi, Indy. <laughs> How have you been? I've been good. You've been good? Yes. Oh my God. Did you miss me? Yes, I missed you so much. I missed you so much. Oh, what, what have you been doing since the last time I seen you? Uh, I got these butterflies sent to me. Um, it, it started off as little worms, then they went to like, the sh they crawled to the top of the thing and they went to shells and they, when they came out to these beautiful butterflies. Beautiful butterflies. How many did you get? Um, i will probably like say five or two, five or six, five, five or six. Five or six? I yeah. love me some butterflies. <laughs> you know that? Yes, I do. You do? You love butterflies. Yes, I love butterflies. They mean good stuff, right? Yes, they mean good stuff. Yep. Okay, tell me, what, was Christmas good? Yes, Christmas was the best. I had this lot. I had, my favorite gift was this like little um, clay kit. I got this little crystal clay kit. It's like, it's like clay, but like you mold it into anything you want. And you paint it and you like put this crystal clay stuff on it and you, you sit overnight and you crackle it and it makes like crackle sounds. Oh, so it's kind of like an arts and crafts type of thing? Yes, it is. Oh, you creative too, like that girl? <laughs> You on the road. <laughs> so, like, you've been having, like, a really good year already. I heard she was featured in a music video that Beyonce released. <laughs> what? Beyonce put me on her video. I was so shocked to find out Beyonce put me on her video. Oh, my God. Wow. Oh my I was God. so shocked. <laughs> you were shocked? Yes. You could dance, so you know that, right? Thank you. Oh my God, you're so talented. Shoo, you gotta teach me something else. You're talented moves. and you're a queen. Yep, so I always know that. <laughs> I love your words of encouragement. You're so sweet. And then, I heard you've been doing nails too. I see you. You've been doing it on Instagram. I've been having nails. It's like, uh, it was like a little white kid of nails. And I put diamonds on, I'd be like, I'm feeling like me today, girl. Let me see these nails. <laughs> you did that? Yeah, I did. Because I love some studs. You, you see, how did I do? I love your nails so much. You, you, you got, I love them. Did yes. I do OK? You did perfect. It, it's, yes. Oh, my god. They're gorgeous. Girl, with your encouragement, I feel like I could do Anything. Yeah, you can do anything you want. But believe in yourself. Don't let nobody let you down. Thank yeah. you. Can I have a hug? I needed that. Thank you so much for that. That's so sweet. OK, you have a lot of fans. I want to know, what would you say to your fans? Believe in yourself. Don't let nobody hold you down. You're strong. You're beautiful. And just always believe in yourself. Don't let nobody hold you down. Because they're just haters. <laughs> Madam, no. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch four episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.